great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus christ you're my
Great is he like none before Son of God the living word oh praise oh sing praise He walked the ways of Galilee raised the dead to hear.
Good morning. Welcome to St Stephen's. It's lovely to see you this morning. If you're a visitor, a particular welcome to you. Uh, my name is Mark Barker. I'm the vicar here. I'm going to be leading us through the service. If you're joining us online, also welcome to you. Young people and children are staying in for our service this morning, and there are some sheets at the back. Um, Glynn has got them at the back somewhere, um, which kind of follow through the service a bit, um, but bits for you to fill out as well as we go through the service. Do go and pick one up if you haven't got one um, already. Um, later on in our service, we'll be doing our everyday God encounter time as well, which is an opportunity for people to come um, and just share briefly how you've in got encountered God in the last um, week or so. Um, so do be thinking about that. If you've got something you'd like to share, um, just remember you'll be on camera and not to be sharing names out of people unless you have their permission. So we're going to begin our service with a call to worship with some words and responses adapted from Psalm 103. So let's stand and the words are going to appear on the screen. So if you say the bits in bold. Praise the Lord, O my soul. From head to toe, I'll bless his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I won't forget a single blessing. Praise the Lord, O my soul. He forgives my sins, every one. Praise the Lord, O my soul. He has saved my life. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. He crowns me with love and mercy. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. From head to toe, I'll bless his holy name. And let's do that right now in three songs of worship as we praise God.
please take a seat. And the Hamlins are going to come and lead us in our prayers. Let us pray. We will begin and end our time of prayer today using some words from Lecto 365. You may like to open your hands as we receive from God. We pause to be still, to breathe slowly to recenter our scattered senses on the presence of God. In pausing to be still, in recentering ourselves, we make space for the Holy Spirit to fill our lives again. Creator God, who formed humanity from dust, Breathe in us again. Let us take a moment to breathe in the constancy of the Lord's love, to breathe in the comfort of the Holy Spirit within us. Breathing in life, breathing out tiredness, breathing in hope, Breathing out fear, breathing in joy, breathing out sorrow, breathing in grace, breathing out shame, breathing in peace, breathing out anxiety. Thank you for the kisses. Thank you for the kisses in heaven. We're praying for each us. Thank you that your names are all on Jesus' lips. Open your ears to hear your voice, Lord, please help us not to be so legacy that we don't spend time listening to you and me, no, we not go to tell your every day how much we love you amen we bring to you the needs of our broken world as our hearts break with yours at the pain and suffering for places with ongoing war those suffering from food shortages, fire and flooding, for all those lives lost and torn apart. We cry out to you, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, and bring comfort to all those who are suffering. May your voice be heard by the world leaders. May your will be done, Lord. We pray for your protection and all those working with, hu with humanitarian aid, that the aid will safely reach those in need. 
and for protection on vehicles and aid workers. Amen. Lord, we lift to you all those we know suffering in body, mind or spirit. For those living with dementia and those who care for them. Lord, pl please bring comfort, friendship and the assurance of your presence. For those living with life-limiting conditions, we pray for your peace and the relief from pain. Breathing in peace, breathing out pain. Breathing in hope, breathing out despair. Breathing in comfort, breathing out loneliness. For those suffering with their mental health, and those who journey with them. Lord, we cry out to you for your protection on their minds, on their lives. We pray you hem them in, Lord, with your love, your protection. Hem them in with people who care for them, people with time to walk with them in their shoes, on their path. We pray particularly for the young people we know, those in our church, those in our town. Help us never to miss an opportunity to encourage them, to listen to them, to love them. Open our hearts and lives to unexpected interruptions this week. Give us opportunities where we can walk alongside those who are lonely or worried, those in pain, those suffering in any way. Help us, Lord, to abandon our own agendas for a time and walk with them at their speed. We pray and thank you for those who lead us here at St Stephen's, that you will give them wisdom and discernment as they serve you day by day. Amidst the busyness of each day, we pray that you will help them and us make space in the day for time alone with you, Lord. Time to give you our full attention, time to be still, time to listen, time to receive. We give special thanks today for all those in our music groups who lead our worship each week. Thank you for the gifts you have given them, <coughs> gifts that they share with us. Thank you for the time they spend preparing and for their willingness to lead us in your presence. We pray blessing on them all today. We thank you for all those who serve our church. Please prompt all our hearts for new ways we can serve you here at St Stephen's. Amen. Creator God, who formed humanity from the dust. Breathe in us again. Revive us and sanctify us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Set our hearts on fire with the good news of the gospel. Father, help us to live this day to the full being true to you in every way. Jesus, help us to give ourselves away to others, being kind to everyone we meet. Spirit, help us to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all we say and do.
Thank you, Richard and Isaac, for those prayers. We celebrate all sorts of aspects of life throughout the week, throughout the year. We've got baptism families who are looking to baptism coming up here this morning, and welcome to you all. Yesterday we had a wedding here of Abbey Hams, which was a great celebration. Um, Abbey having grown up in the church here as well. Got others who are going to be married, and I need to publish some bands of marriage. And I do so between David Allen Lee and Paula Janet Gregory, both of this parish. That's for the second time of asking. Between Adam James Duncan and Isabel Christine Sarah Benz Copin, both um, of this parish, for the first time of asking. And between Benedict Wesley Conway Jones and Patricia Hannah Galbraith Olive in both of this parish, and that's for the first time of asking. Let's pray for them. Father God, we thank you for the gift of marriage. We thank you for the wedding here yesterday of Joel and Abby. Pray your blessing on them as they begin married life. We pray also for David and Paula, for Adam and Isabel, for Benedict and Patricia as they prepare for their wedding day. Lord, may you be with them in their preparation. May their wedding days be days of great celebration and rejoicing. And may you be at the heart of their lives together, now and always. Amen. And as we think about times of life, sadly also just to mention that Mary Bell died on Friday and our prayers are with Wendy and the family at this time. Be more news about funeral in due course. Other things coming up just to mention, um, next Sunday we've got our plugged in evening service as well at 6 p.m., um, and then on the 28th of April, there is a church and lunch following the morning service. If you haven't yet booked in, um, do book in online and I'll let the office know so that we can add you to the list and have some idea of how many people are coming. Um, and finally, we've got um, our annual meeting coming up at the beginning of June. If you're not on the electoral roll of the church yet um, and would like to do so, then please. Um, get a form, um, you can do that online or you can be in touch with the office and we can let you have um, an electoral roll form as well. As I mentioned at the beginning of the service, we have an opportunity every um, week for people just to share everyday God encounters, what we call EDGE. Um, and uh, just want to give a chance if anybody has got something they'd like to share this morning of ways you've encountered God big ways or small ways of God at work in your life. Anybody, uh, Richard's going to come and share. Anybody else coming up? Come on up, Roy, come on up as well. We'll go for Richard first. That's on. Yep. Thank you. Morning, everybody. Um, Just to say, uh, yeah, I've I've had some challenges at work um, over the last few months, and uh, many of you might know I've got a, a bit of a journey when I go to the office. I don't go that often, but it's about an hour and 40 minutes along the M25, M3. So I do use that time to pray and, uh, you know, seek God uh, in everything really, but particularly work, uh, and ask him to speak to me. And uh, uh, just on Wednesday when I went down, um, I was praying along the M3, and then um, a van overtook me, and uh, it it was a sign written, um, Resilient Plumbing Solutions. Now, I'm no plumber, Uh, But I believe that God was just reminding me of the need to be resilient in him, in all that we do. And um, that was a real encouragement. Just just little things, I think, uh, just encourage you uh, through difficult times. And it did me. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Roy. Good morning, everyone. I go to the Men in the Morning group each week. And I often ask if there's anyone who's prepared uh, to bring a thought for the day for the following week. 
And I volunteered um, to do that one week last month. It was a few weeks ago. And um, the fact that we were, the connect, the connect group I belonged to, was studying the Lectio Divina course. And specifically, we did the parable of the prodigal son. Well, I decided it might be a good idea because I had some thoughts about the prodigal son which were fresh to me. So I thought it'd be a good idea to speak, to get a, um, one of the thoughts from that parable to share. Anyway, I thought that for a few days and then I thought, I decided it might not be suitable for a single thought for the day. There's quite a lot in it. So I thought I'd look somewhere else. In my bedside cupboard, I had a, just one book. And I thought, anyway, I went to the bedside cupboard. I thought it was Brother Lawrence, The Practice of the Presence of God, but it wasn't. It was another book called Finding Sanctuary, The Monastic Steps for Everyday Life. It was from a TV series, The Monastery. So I thought, well, I'll have a look in here at the contents to see if this, there's anything I could share from my thoughts for the day. I looked at the contents, and I'll read them out to you. Part one, everyday life. Part two, monastic steps. Step one, silence. Step two, contemplation. Step three, obedience. Step four, humility. Step five, community. Step six, spirituality. Step seven, hope. And then it had written underneath, Lectio Divina, the prodigal son. I was totally knocked out, absolutely as you can imagine. So I think God had different ideas to what I had. So I decided to... Uh, use the something from the prodigal son. I won't go into details. It'll be a sermon. <laughs> but uh, I, let's put it like this. The fact that God spoke to me in that way was so very special. It was so, so very special. And it's really, I don't know, I'm trying to work out what he's done for me. But uh, perhaps you can work that out. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much. So we've heard stories of everyday God encounters. On this second Sunday after Easter, we're going to be hearing an encounter that Peter had with the risen Lord Jesus. But I want to begin by looking at Peter's first encounter with Jesus. Peter was a very ordinary man, no different really from you or me. He wasn't a superhero. He wasn't posh. There's no mention that he was good at sport. He wasn't a brilliant scientist. In fact, he was very, wasn't very well educated at all. Rather, he was just an ordinary fisherman who went out each day on his boat to catch fish on the Sea of Galilee. One day, when Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Peter with his brother Andrew. Jesus said, come follow me. At once, Peter and his brother left their nets and followed Jesus. You can find the story in Matthew 4. So let's take away the net and the fish as Peter had stopped fishing now to follow Jesus. And instead we're going to put up an L sign, a learner sign, to remind us that Jesus, that Peter as a disciple was learning to follow Jesus and do the things that Jesus did. We have the learner sign up, thank you. Over the next three years, Peter followed Jesus. And we read of accounts of things he heard and saw in the four Gospels, Matthew, 
Mark, Luke and John. I wonder what you think were the best bits about following Jesus that Peter might have thought. Which miracle do you think Peter enjoyed seeing the most? I'm going to wander around church and get some answers now. What part, what do you think was the best bit for Jesus, for, for, for Peter in following Jesus? Or what miracles do you think most stood out for Peter? Anybody got any ideas? Heard Sylvie? Feeding of the 5,000. Feeding of the 5,000. Anybody else? We know the story of Peter. Oh, we're right at the back. Melissa's going to get me working now. <laughs> I run round. When the, the rooster crowed and then Peter... Oh, um, right, crowing the rooster. We'll come to that in a moment. Anybody else? All right, over this side. Roman. People have obviously sat knowing this is coming up as far apart as they can. The opposite to that one, when Jesus accepted G, um, Peter back. Okay, when G, right, we'll come to that story as well in a moment. Yeah, you're ahead of the c curve here. Right, anybody else? Oh. Around. Stephen? I think t seeing the water turned into wine. Water turned I thought you were going to say seeing Mark run around church. <laughs> See, seeing water turned into wine. Anybody else? Right, Chris? Uh, miraculous catch of fish. Thank you. Yeah, the catch of fish. And we've had the boats up there. Sophie? Uh, walking on water? Walking on water, that must have been an amazing thing to experience, yes. Okay, thank you. Lots of different miracles and stories about Peter, and there's plenty more in the Gospels. But I need a young helper. Anybody going to volunteer to be my young helper? Nobody. I'll have to pick somebody. Anybody going to be my young helper? Come on. Before I chose somebody. All right. Can you just come and stand up here and put on this rucksack onto your back, please? Yeah? Yeah, what have you got yourself into? Quite. Having had a wonderful three years with Jesus, one evening everything went wrong for Peter. And we can find this part of Peter's story in Matthew 26. Jesus told Peter that something bad was going to happen to Jesus, and that all the disciples would run away. Peter said he'd never run away. But Jesus said, Peter, before the cockerel crows, you'll deny me three times. Now, I did think about bringing one of my own chickens, live chickens, but I thought... No, that's going to cause chaos. So I have brought my co one of my cockerels from the garden. Stand to one side so that people see my cockerel. Um, so we've got a cockerel. That night Jesus was arrested and Peter found himself outside the place where Jesus was being interrogated. And whilst there, three times Peter was asked if he knew Jesus. And three times Peter denied it. Firstly, a servant girl said, you with Jesus the Galilean. But Peter responded saying, I don't know what you are talking about. His first denial. <laughs> then another servant girl said to a bystander, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. But again, Peter responded, I don't know the man. You're a big, strong man, aren't you? <laughs> don't fall backwards. <laughs> then another bystander came up to Peter and said, Certainly you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. And cursing, Peter responds again, I don't know the man. Oh, 
Okay, getting a bit heavier? Yeah? You need to be thankful that there are only three denials, don't, don't you? So <laughs> At that point, the cockerel crowed. No, I'm not going to crow. <laughs> How do you think Peter felt after he'd said that he didn't know Jesus three times? Right, I'm coming around again. What do you think Jesus, uh, Peter felt? Extremely heavy, both sort of physically and sort of way down, way down, right? Way down, yeah, way down, yeah. Anybody else? Come on back there, David. Crestfallen. Oh, very good. Crestfallen. Anybody else? Ashamed. Ashamed. Yeah. Any other words you'd want to add to that? No. Okay, that's brilliant. You feeling weighed down? Crestfallen. Yeah. <laughs> Stay there, though. Not for much longer. After Peter had said that he didn't know Jesus, he actually went and cried, we're told. He felt so awful after what he'd done. In his heart, Peter carried the weight of guilt that he had let Jesus down, the person who had loved him the most. This heavy rucksack reminds us that it isn't easy carrying heavy loads of guilt in our hearts like Peter did on that night. Peter was so upset and weighed down with guilt that he decided to go back to fishing. Perhaps Peter thought that Jesus wouldn't want him to be a disciple any longer. But we're going to find out what happened now with Peter after he'd met the risen Jesus, and Chris is going to come and read for us. Do you want to take that off for the moment? Put it on the table. Thank you. The uh, reading is on page 1090 in the Church Bibles. John chapter 21 reading from verses 15 to 19. Je Jesus reinstates Peter. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Pe Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Chris. I need Reuben back up here. Come on, Reuben, back up. Come on, 
It's lucky you're a strong young man, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Right. So we left Peter carrying the weight of guilt around with him, and he'd gone back to fishing. He's so disappointed with himself. He'd let Jesus down. He felt guilty. He'd betrayed the one who'd loved him. But instead of being angry with Peter, or ignoring Peter, or condemning Peter for disowning him and messing up, Jesus met with Peter after he'd risen and gave Peter a chance to put things right. As we heard in that reading, Jesus said to Peter, do you love me? And Peter responds, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. That first brick, ugh, come on, get them out. <laughs> that first brick, in a sense, removed by Jesus. Then a second time, we heard Jesus again ask Peter, do you love me? And again, Peter replied, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. The second brick removed. And then we're told that Jesus asks Peter again, do you love me? And Peter responds, Lord, you know that I love you. The third brick of guilt removed. Does that feel a bit lighter? There you go. <laughs> Jesus made it possible for Peter's guilt rucksack to be emptied. He still wanted Peter to follow him. In fact, Jesus wanted Peter to look after God's people, the church. He said, feed my sheep. He went from fishing back to being a follower. We have that PowerPoint moved on. To being a learner, to being a disciple, to following Jesus. What about us? We're ordinary people like Peter was, who will mess up from time to time. The good news for us is that even when we have messed up, Jesus still loves us and wants us to be his followers. We're going to be quiet for a moment. I'm going to suggest that you hold your hands out as if you're holding a brick. Reuben, you hold that one for me. Hold it out. As if you're holding a brick, one of these heavy bricks. And as you can hold your hands out with that brick in your hand, ask yourself the question, am I weighed down inside with any guilt? Is there guilt stopping me from following Jesus? What is there in my life that's getting in the way of my relationship with Jesus? In what ways may I have let Jesus down? Take a moment to be quiet and reflect on those questions. going to join together in the words that will be on the screen as a prayer of confession, of saying sorry to God. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, please forgive us for the ways that we have let you down. We are sorry for the wrong things we have done, the unloving words that we have spoken, and the bad attitudes that we have held. Help us to follow you again.
put your brick down. Having said sorry, hear these words of forgiveness. For Jesus says to each one of us, I forgive you. Be free from your sin and your guilt. Let it go. Put it down and follow me. Amen. Thank you, Reuben. We're going to end this time of reflecting on the story of Peter by saying together the prayer that Jesus taught us. And I think Olive and Etta, I have seen them somewhere. Are they here? Where's Olive and Etta? Oh, there. I'm oh, looking over there because that's normally where you are. <laughs> Olive and Etta are going to come and help lead us in this prayer. Come and stand here. And the words should appear on the screen there. You can kind of say, come a bit closer and say this. Go on, lead us in this prayer then. Our, Our Father in, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, girls. Thank you very much. Jesus asks each one of us the same question he asked Peter. Do you love me? What is our response? One way we can express our response is in worship, where, like Peter, we tell Jesus, you know that I love you. So we're going to express our love for Jesus in a couple of songs of worship as our band comes up and leads us again. So let's stand to worship Jesus and declare our love for him.
Please be seated. Coming to the end of our service, do stay for refreshments that are served at the back of church. If you're a visitor, um, do say hello to me after the service. I'll be around at the back somewhere um, and it'd be great to, to meet you. If you want to give to the work of God in this place, many give, people give by standing order um, on a regular basis, but there are plates by the doors and machines as well. Um, but we offer all that we give, um, whether by direct debit, whether 
in the bags or on the machines, as well as the gifts that we use in, day by day, those acts of service. We offer them to God in a prayer that will be on the screen now. Let's pray this together. God of all goodness and grace, receive the gifts we offer and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we're going to use as our closing prayer, a prayer that's called the grace, the prayer that we say together and to each other. So if you feel comfortable, why not look around as you say this prayer at the people near you. So let's join together as we say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and evermore.